This is Championship Bridge. I'm Alex Dreyer. And as you know, we have two pairs of bridge experts. They play rubber bridge against each other for cash awards under the rules of contract bridge. And now here is my colleague, the star of our show, affable, debonair, the man who is at home anywhere in the world when he is playing bridge. This is Charlie Gore. A very familiar face on Championship Bridge, the very gracious B. Schenken, making her sixth appearance on the show, and in the past five weeks has certainly demonstrated the very obvious fact that women can play marvelous bridge. And now her husband, certainly one of the most skillful of the all-time greats, Howard Schenken, has won every major title. His daily column is syndicated throughout the country, and his reputation of being one of the toughest competitors in the game has been well earned. Their opponents, first from New York City, director of New York's famous card school, Peter Leventritt, a former member of the World Championship team and presently a member of the internationally renowned Goran team of four, is one of the most respected teachers in the game. Harold August, Peter's partner from New York City, a man who has represented the United States in World Championship competition. A tough competitor, an advocate of an aggressive style of play, Harold has won many national tournament victories as the teammate of Charles Goran. B, it's very nice to have you back here, you and Howard. Thank I want you, to Charlie. congratulate We're... you on your long series of successes. As you know, this breaks the track record. This is your sixth appearance, I believe. Yes. Peter? It's Charlie. nice to welcome you back on the show. It's been a long time since you've been on. I know, of course, that you're the proprietor of America's most popular bridge school. Have you observed any difference in the registration or the interest since our bridge show got on television? Well, I know that they all watch the show because they tell me so. And I think one of the big reasons, it's human nature, you know, they, they all love, all the pupils love to watch the experts bid to a wrong contract or make a wrong play. <laughs> Harold, it's nice to have you back again. Now, you and I have been uh, members of the same international team for a number of years. I therefore would like to ask you a question. From your knowledge of the European players, how do you compare their talents with those of our own American champions? Well, Charlie, I feel that individually the American experts are superior to the European experts. However, I feel the European partnerships are more highly developed than ours. Thank you. Well, we'll be ready to start in just a minute. So. Let me wish you all the best of luck in the contest that's about to come up. Thanks, Thank Charlie. You, Thank you, Charlie. In order to play Championship Bridge on television, we observe these basic ground rules. We play Rubber Bridge, provide $1,000 to the pair scoring the greatest number of points over the half-hour period, $500 to the losers, and we have bonus money for slams bid and made. The winners, of course, come back next week and face a new set of challengers. And now, let's see what happens this week, huh? Bridge teacher Peter Leventritt and tournament veteran Harold August challenge the fabulous Schenkens. All right, Peter. You and Harold are both old friends of mine and teammates, so you don't have to play too well. Well, we wish you good luck, too, Howard. Thank you. I wish you meant it. <laughs> My, he has a hand there. Yes, he has 23 high card points and a well-balanced hand. It's a classic two-note Trump opening bid. I don't. I don't. Yes, sir. Two-note Trump. Two-note Trump it is. Now Howard Schenken. Howard, a winner in his illustrious bridge career about every major bridge title, can daydream about past glories with this hand. Pass. Here's Harold August. His partner is open two-note Trump. Not much here, either. No, he hasn't much, but it seems to me he'd be uh, gratified to find his partner with either four hearts or four spades. Three clubs. Hey, what about that, Charlie? Yes, Alex. Three clubs is a request for a four-card major suit. Uh-huh. All right, now B. Schenken, her partner has passed. Say she likes that three-club bid, Charlie. Double. The double makes it very clear that she wants her partner to lead that suit. Uh-huh. Now, Leventritt, he opened two no trump and partner responded three clubs, getting a fit in a major suit. Well, Peter has a very nice one here. Three spades. Quite proper, of course. Howard Schenken. Pass. Now, Harold August, his partner bid spades in response to his request for a major suit. Harold, of course, can now carry on the game. Right. Four spades. And so he does. A helpless B. Schenken. Pass. Here's Peter. Can he push on, Charlie? Huh? No, Alex. Peter has already made a full disclosure of his strength by his opening bid of 2-0 Trump. 
If the partnership had sufficient points to produce a slam, August would have known it and would have taken some appropriate action. Pass. That makes it my lead. That means he passes four spades it is. Say, that was interesting bidding, Charlie. Let's look at the chart, huh? Well, here it is. Peter Leventritt, holding an evenly balanced hand with 23 high card points, made the natural opening bid of 2 no trump. Howard Schenken passed, and August made what may seem to be a peculiar bid to many observers, the bid of three clubs. This, of course, is artificial. After no trump bids, when the takeout is in clubs, it is a request for the opener to name a four-card major suit if he has one. B. Schenken took this opportunity to double the bid of three clubs, which she knew to be artificial. This was for the purpose of directing a lead against the final contract. Leventritt did show a four-card major suit by bidding three spades, and Harold August carried on to four spades the final contract. Peter Leventritt, former president of the American Contract Bridge League, to declare out four spades. It's my lead, right? And this is Howard Schenken's hand. What's his opening lead? It's the five of clubs. Yes, Alex. Remember, B. Schenken doubled the club bid. Uh-huh. And she did so for the purpose of suggesting a club lead. And Howard is pleased to conform. Well, I don't have too much. Harold August has tabled his dummy. Now can Leventritt hold the opponents to three tricks? Well, let's see. He plays dummy singleton ten. There's B. Schenken's ace, and Peter Leventritt plays low. B. switches to hearts, leading the nine. To Clara, Peter Leventritt plays his ace. And what will his plan be after this trick, Charlie? Huh? I believe he'll attack the trump suit, Alex. Let's watch. All right, Leventritt gathers in his first trick. And you're right again, Charlie. Leventritt lays down his ace of trumps. Remember now, this is a false paid contract Peter is struggling with. And every student of the game, I'm sure, is watching this closely. Peter continues trumps leading the king. Howard Schenken gives up the nine. Dummy a little one. And B. Schenken follows. All but one trump have been drawn. And Peter wants that one trump. He plays his six of spades. Howard shows out, signaling with the seven of hearts. Dummy plays the high ten. And B. Schenken releases that last enemy trump. On lead in dummy now, Leventritt plays the ten of diamonds. B. Schenken low, and will Leventritt finesse for the king? Yes, he plays the deuce. But the finesse fails as Howard Schenken wins the second trick for the defense with his king. Remember, this is four spades. Howard cashes his good king of hearts. Nothing dummy can do about it. Nothing declarer can do about it. And that's booked for the defense. And can Peter hold the line, Charlie? Try and get it. He's laughing a little, does he know? <laughs> well, I'm going to take the rest. I have the high trump. All high diamonds in the two high clubs. Um, no. Very good. Oh, I see it. For making their four spade contract, Peter Leventritt and Harold August break fast with a 120 point game. They're vulnerable now, and both teams eagerly await the next deal. Schenken trying to deal himself a good hand here. Give us another little hand like that, Howard. Uh, like the last one. Oh, come on. Wouldn't you like to see a nice even match, this, you know? This one you can give to Harold. Uh, <laughs> I like to see it come down to the wire. Mm. Hey, I want to play a hand, too. <laughs> Howard will bid first. And let's see here. Two points in spades, five in diamonds, two in clubs, and seven in hearts. That's 16 points. A one-no-trump bid of pristine purity, huh, Charlie? Hmm? <laughs> right, Alex. I dealt. One no trump. Harold August here, and can he overcall two clubs, Charlie? What do you he think? He can, I suppose. But when he recalls that he's vulnerable, he may take a dim view of such action. Uh-huh. Pass. Well, he takes the dim view. Now B. Schenken, her partner, open to no trump. 
Gosh, that's a depressing end. Six hearts to the queen. She certainly can't bid to no Trump. That requires eight or nine points. Right, Alex. But she can mention her heart suit, which is six cards long. Mm -hmm. Two hearts. Quite proper, Alex. B. Schenken's response of two hearts, of course, announces a hand which is rather weak in high cards. Uh-huh. Now Peter Leventritt, his partner has passed. He's got some heavy artillery here. So what do you suggest that he do, Alex? Well, I think it would be dangerous to bid in the teeth of an opening no Trump bid, Charlie. I think he'd muffle his guns. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> we all agree. All right, Schenken here opened one no Trump. Partner responded meekly with two hearts. There's nothing further Howard can reasonably do. Pass. Harold August, former winner of the coveted Masters Knockout Team Championship. Can he show his clubs now, Charlie? Hmm? Being vulnerable, he might consider three clubs too dangerous, despite his 100 honors. Pass. Say, that was interesting bidding, Charlie, wasn't it? It was indeed, Alex. Howard Schenken opened the bidding with one no trump, for which he has the classic requirements. He has an evenly balanced hand and a high card count of 16. August passed. Observe the pro does not overcall a no trump bid with a suit which he is prepared to lead. B. Schenken had a routine two heart bid. Such a bid pleads with partner to pass. Mr. Schenken, influenced by partner's announced weakness, as indicated by the two heart response, retired from the bidding. This apparently afforded Mr. August another opportunity to compete. But Harold, cognizant of his vulnerable condition, preferred not to run the risk of disaster. In my opinion, he quite properly passed. Making it my lead, I guess. And this is Peter Leventritt's hand, and he's pondering his opening lead. What will it be? A disappointing response, partner. Yes. Well, it's the ace of spades. Say, why not the king of spades, Charlie, to show partner he holds the ace? Peter is attempting a bit of deception here. Uh huh. He's quite sure that the dummy, who actually bid no trump, holds the queen. And he hopes to mislead B as to the location of the king. Yes, Charlie, dummy does have that queen of spades. B selected the five from dummy. August played the four. And declare a B. Schenken plays her deuce. That's the first trick for the defense against the two-heart contract. Leventritt shifts to a club, leading to seven. B. Schenken plays dummy's queen. Harold August slaps down his king. B obviously can't contest it. That's two tricks for the defense. Harold August returns his good ace of clubs. B gives up her remaining club. You know, Charlie, I think most people get a kick out of setting one and two bids. All right, Leventritt and August need three more to set this two-heart contract. The defense has taken the first three tricks, and Harold August returns the ten of clubs, and B trumps with the ten of hearts. B hopes that Leventritt will be unable to overruff with the jack. Well, she need not fear any longer, Charlie. Leventritt had a club. All right, B takes her first trick toward the two-heart contract. Now attacks trumps, leading her six. Leventritt has one. But Dummy will win this with the king. Harold August follows low. Two trumps still out, remember. And now B. Schenken leads from Dummy, a low trump. August shows out, pitching a club. B plays her queen. Leventritt, now marked for both trumps, surrenders his five. Will she draw the last trump? No, B. Schenken switches to spades, and Leventritt leaps in with his king. Well, that sets up Dummy's queen of spades. For a diamond discard, Alex. Leventritt exits with his last trump, the jack. But Dummy's remaining ace will smother this. And next we'll see that good queen of spades led from Dummy, huh, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> a reasonable prediction, my good friend. All right, there it is, Dummy's queen of spades. August plays the nine. Declara B. Schenken sheds a losing diamond. She'll lose but one more diamond to make her two-heart contract, huh, Charlie? The ace of diamonds will be the last trick for the defense. Right. The king of diamonds is led from dummy. Well, I'll concede the ace of diamonds. I have two trump left and two diamonds. I will take it. Taking two. You had a nice hand. 
All right, forbidding two hearts and just making it, the Schenkens receive 60 below toward game. August and Leventritt are still vulnerable as we go on to hand three of championship bridge. We have a partial, Bussy. Remember, this is your turn to bid for My us, turn to open the bidding. I'm not gonna like you. All right, this is the last hand now. Peter Leventritt, who seems happy here with his lead in this match, is hoping his partner will deal him some power. And here's the dealer, Harold August, who, of course, will bid first. His hand looks pretty drab, Charlie. He needs more horsepower to get anything started here. You ready, Pete? Yes, sir. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Over to B. Schenken. Well, B has a miserable-looking hand, too. Pass. Now, Peter Leventritt, his partner has passed. He's vulnerable, remember? Boy, we gotta have action. This is the crucial hand. Three, nine, fifteen high card points, Charlie. Now, wait a minute. Add one point for the doubleton spade. Oh, yes, that's and right. And one for the doubleton diamond, Alex. Uh-huh. One heart. Now, Howard Schenken. Well, I fully expect he will overcall with his five-card major suit. Mm-hmm. One spade. All right, here's Harold August. His partner's one heart bid has just been overcalled with one spade. Well, Harold certainly has enough for a free raise. Two hearts. Say, Charlie, how many points are necessary for Harold here to have for a free raise after an intervening overcall? At least eight or nine points are required to justify raising partner's opening bid. I see. Now B. Schenken, her partner is overcalled one spade. Uh, well, B may or may not carry on the fight in spades. I would not think it out of line if she chose to do so. Two spades. Well, the lady didn't step out of line. Here's Leventritt. Partner has once helped his heart suit. I think Peter might go directly to four hearts. Peter has 17 points, and partner presumably has at least eight to justify his free raise. Three hearts. Well, he's cautiously testing his partner's raise to allow for the possibility that the raise was somewhat shaded. Boy, this is getting interesting. Here's Howard Schenk, and he's battled in spades, and B has helped him. Will he call in spades once more? Let's see. Three spades. Boy, he's a fighter. He wants to go. Now here's August, and let's see if he pushes on to game in hearts. Four hearts. Well, four hearts it is. A resigned B. Schenken. Pass. And a contented Peter Leventritt. Pass. And a resigned Howard Schenken. Well... I pass. Well, they bid game, Charlie. All right, Peter Leventritt, the declarer at four hearts, and the big question is the long reign of King Howard Schenken and his queen about to come to an end. This is Howard Schenken's hand. He's cogitating over his opening lead. It's the diamond three. Make it heavy, Harold. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to be pretty lucky to make this one. I have a rock-bound minimum. From the coast of Maine. From the coast of Maine. <laughs> Harold August has disclosed the dummy, and we're looking over Peter Leventritt's shoulder now. He finesses with the Queen of Diamonds from dummy. B. Schenken has the king, however. The first trick to the Schenkens, and they need three more to set Leventritt's four-heart contract. B. Schenken now returns the nine of spades. Declare Leventritt covers with his king. Howard tops it with his ace. Dummy the ten. Dummy's queen of spades is now set up, and I'm wondering if the Schenkens can wallop this hand enough to win the match. Howard Schenken returns a low diamond. The ace is played from Dummy. B. Schenken has the nine, and Leventritt gives up his last diamond. He has his first trick, and he has a long way to go to make four hearts. The finesse for the king is in order, of course. One finesse down the hatch. <laughs> That's book for the defense. Howard, for the third time, leaves the diamond. There's dummy's remaining deuce. B. Schenken tosses the jack. And Peter Leventritt trumps with the six of hearts. The question, how bad can the Schenkens hurt Leventritt's four-heart contract? And remember, the defense has book. Peter now plays the top trump. He wants the two trumps still out. There's one of the two contributed by Howard. And there's the last hostile trump contributed by B. This is the last and the crucial hand. They're going down to the wire on this one. 
All right, Peter Leventritt plays the low spade toward Dummy's good queen. Now, Peter is concerned about clubs, Alex. Mm -hmm. It will be interesting to see how he manages the club suit. Well, we'll soon see. Here comes the low club from Dummy. B plays low. Leventritt will finesse for the king, I guess. No, he goes up with his ace. Howard follows low, and I'll bet Peter's got something special in his mind for that club suit. He now leads a trump to ten of hearts. Trumps are all out, Charlie. Is this a squeeze? <laughs> no, Alex. Peter is returning to dummy to once again test the club suit. Uh-huh. I see. Dummy wins with the jack there, Charlie. Leventritt now leads another low club from dummy. B. Schenken covers with the nine. Say, look here, Charlie. Leventritt ducks playing the three. Wow, he's lucky. There's Howard's king, a beautiful play. I have to give you a, a slough and a rough. I don't need the slough and the rough. I have a high trump and two high clubs. Hmm. Nice play, Peter. Thank you, thank you. Down one, but Leventritt and August still win this match. For setting the vulnerable Leventritt one trick on his four-heart contract, the Schenkins receive 100 above, plus 50 for part score on an uncompleted game. August and Leventritt, however, receive 300 for game on the unfinished rubber, and thus they are the new champions on Championship Bridge. For the 210-point total of the Schenkins, is surpassed by the 420 points of August and Leventritt. And to them, our warmest congratulations. Boy, Charlie Leventritt played those clubs beautifully, huh? Yes, Alex. Peter Leventritt made a splendid guess in clubs. Attacking clubs for the first time at trick eight, Peter led low from dummy. He now very shrewdly refused to take what appears to be a routine finesse with a queen of clubs. Instead, he played his ace. He decided that from the bidding, Howard Schenken almost surely had the king and that the finesse was destined to fail. He then returned to dummy with a trump and led another small club. B. Schenken played the nine, and Leventritt again played low. Howard Schenken was forced to win with his king. Observe that if Leventritt had finessed the queen of clubs initially, taking the ordinary finesse, he would have lost two club tricks and gone down to a 200-point set. A very neat and delicate play on the part of Mr. Leventritt. All right, so the winning team is Peter Leventritt and Harold August, and now here's the winning bridge tip from Charlie Gorin. On the second hand, Howard Schenken opened the bidding with one no trump. The opponents did not participate, and B. Schenken responded with two hearts. She had a six-card heart suit, but a very weak hand. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that though Howard had the ace and king of hearts, he did not raise the suit. Now I have here a replica of his holding. This ought to show the nature of the two heart bid. It's a plea by partner to let it go. Please don't raise, I have a very indifferent hand. Schenken obliged by just passing. And now this is Alex Dreyer and Charles Gorin saying goodbye from Championship Bridge. Samsonite, official championship bridge furniture provided by Schwader Brothers. Bicycle playing cards, the official playing cards of championship bridge. And we wish to thank the U.S. Playing Card Company for helping us to produce championship bridge.